What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 67. And today we're returning with two big games with... Ah, oh, it's a long pause, wasn't it? Today we're returning with two big games with our Canaries, uh, Arsenal at home in the Premier League in a massive battle for European football and a potential banana skin as we take on Sheffield Wednesday in midweek in the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. Before we get to the games though, shout out to you getting on off camera. And of course, in the last episode, you saw our 1 0 loss away at the Etihad and then a 2 2 draw against Chelsea as well. I played, I believe, 12 games off camera as we played through the rest of October, all of November, and a bit of December as well. And as you can see, the run's been pretty decent, I must say. You know, two draws and a defeat, not perfect, but not too bad either. And we began with a 3 0 victory against Hearts in uh, Carrow Road in the Europa League, where Jonathan Sanabria scored his first goal since the break of the lower leg last season. Talk about a comeback story for Sanabria, misses the World Cup but then scores in a meaningless Europa League group game and uh, Akua Akua and Lorecci were our goal scorers and this one is the defenders all got the goals. Uh, following that a 2-0 and a win away at Turf Moor against Burnley Max Ahrens and Rian Brewster, our two English boys uh, getting the goals in this one as we came away with the three points uh, after that 2-1 victory against Chris, uh, Coventry sorry, uh, away at the Rico Arena in the EFL Cup fourth round, uh, which is why we're going to the fifth round, the quarterfinal today against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, Crowley and Madu, our goal scorers, either side of Coventry's goal as we managed to make it through despite a missed penalty from Abbey. And after that, to begin the run off November, we beat Newcastle United by a goal to nil away from home. Mason Mount uh, coming up big, ensuring we will get the three points in this one. And after that, a 7-0 victory, one of our biggest wins of the save away at Tyne Castle against Hearts in Scotland. Um, again, won't show you all the goals. We thrashed Hearts though, against 7 0. Uh, Dembele got two, Abby got two, Jokic got one, Madu got one, and Longstaff got one late on as well in a win which puts through to the knockout stages. And after that, a 2 0 win back at Cow Road against Aston Villa in the Premier League, where unfortunately Brewster did go down and we're still missing him now. More on that in a minute. But uh, Brewster scored the first goal and uh, Pavlovich made it 2 0 right after the restart. After that, though, our uh, first and only loss uh, in the run off camera uh, after the international break came back and were beaten on the south coast by Southampton by two goals to one. Uh, had problems with Southampton during the save a couple of times. This is another one of those games. Uh, Alex Mynton, the former Nottingham Forest winger, gave them the lead. Teddy Gray put us back on level terms, but four minutes later, they found the goal, which would eventually be the winner. And after that, a goalless draw against Young Boys. Didn't really matter. That put us through as group winners in the Europa League. But after that, on my birthday, 29th of November, 2026 I will be 34 at that point in life ouch uh, we beat Brighton by three goals to nil Teddy Gray scoring our first he's really picked it up recently after a slow start Pavlovich scored a lovely volley as well to make it 2-0 and then uh, Carl Crowley uh, got our third goal as well as Gray and Carl in their first game together without Rian Brewster sorry second game to go without Rian Brewster uh, did well together in this one and following that three games to start the month of December 3-1 victory against Crystal Palace to begin with where Bobby Firmino scored the opening goal for Palace coming back to Cower Road and scoring against us but you know we, we turned this game his head and won it 3-1 but I have to say this real briefly as you're watching the goal Santa Bria and Gray were our goal scorers in this one don't you guys think it's a bit too common that players score against their former teams in Football Manager because it just seems to happen every single time. Instead of it being a nice kind of surprise, it seems to happen like 80 to 85% of the time. When you take on a former, uh, a player takes on their former team, they almost always seem to score. Firmino scored against us and Gray scored two against Crystal Palace. It seems to always happen and uh, Teddy's second goal as well was a lovely, lovely goal too. Plucking the ball out of the sky and uh, running around like two or three defenders and slotting it home. So a uh, free one there. But uh, following that 1-1 draw away in London against West Ham fell behind very early in this game didn't really get going at all and after Jonathan Sanabria was sent off late on for a cynical challenge you'd think he'd know better after what happened to him last season in stoppage time I didn't give up and played damage limitation I said no nope, get out there find us that equaliser even down to 10 men uh, I was playing one centre back at this point as well and uh, we managed to find uh, an equalising goal through Teddy Gray making it 1-1 in the 90th minute and our final game off camera won't show you all the goals here a 3-0 victory against Slavia Prague in a meaningless Europa League group game uh, Dembele, bionic legs, uh, scoring was nice to see, and Adley and Madu. 
scored our other two goals as well. So after a very long run off camera right now, you can see in our competitions overview, we have indeed qualified as group winners from the Europa League, undefeated, exactly what we anticipated. The only draw was, of course, against Young Boys on match day five. But yeah, we are through to the next round of the Europa League. And in fact, we'll get a bye in the first knockout round. We'll be going into the second knockout round, which we played in March. So yep, we're through to the second knockout round of the Europa League. And as for the Premier League right now, after slipping up a couple of times with one draw and one defeat, we are sitting in sixth place right now. 16 games played and 30 points on the board. The team to watch are Spurs. Look at Spurs. They've got the best form in the division right now. They've been on an amazing run after a really, really poor start. They have picked it up and then some in recent weeks. For us, for us, for us right now, dropping down to sixth place. And as you can see, five points off Chelsea in fourth place. Although we do have the game in hand. Win that today against the Gunners and we'll cut the gap to two points. And just before the first game of two in today's episode against the Gunners, I do need to show you guys something which is very important indeed. Uh, first and foremost, Mason Mount is still unhappy. He wasn't able to join Spurs, but Mason, suck it up, mate. You're not going there. Pavlovich also wants to start more games, though right now I am giving him a bit more game time. But there is something you guys need to know about. We have agreed to sell a player in January, and it is Adam Ida. Yes, the number nine. Adam Ida who scored the first goal of the series way back in episode one. Corner for Norwich. Now we're going to whip it into the centre with Buendia. And oh, it's a goal for the youngster. Adam Ida off the bench has made it 2-1. I'm going to shout to the boys and encourage them. 17 minutes to go. Buendia's corner and Adam Ida after Edison drops a clanger makes it 2-1. His time at the club has finally come to an end. And I have to say as well, I'm really happy about the sale too, because as you can see, he's joining Club America, the Mexican side, for £29 million. And with clauses, it's not popping up there, with clauses, it could reach 32.5 mil. Can I show you the full transfer? Oh, there we go, right there. So uh, we'll be paying his wages until the end of this year. So his contract expires at uh, 2026 in, uh, oh no, it doesn't. Oh, sorry, 2027. Yeah, that's the end of uh, next calendar year. Um, so his contract expires come the end of the year. So we'll be paying 13 grand, I think it is, of his wages, 13.25k of his uh, wages, until his current contract runs down. And uh, then Club America will take over the, the full contract. But I don't mind paying a little bit of his wages because, again, we were going to lose him for free as he was going to run his contract down. He'd already told me that he was going to leave on a free transfer unless I could negotiate a sale so um yeah we've done that which means we won't lose them for free we'll get some money and again for 30 32.5 mil it could become i'm um i'm actually pretty happy with that so yeah he's going to mexico he's not just leaving the country he's leaving the continent so it's really good for us knowing that we'll never have to face him again adam thanks for your service man we'll always have a soft spot for you but really it was time to go i know some of you will be sad about that and to be fair so am i I'm a little bit disappointed, but you know, it just it just had to be, you know, when you think about it. Teddy Gray coming in this season and Carl Crowley as well. Rian Brewster, last year's Golden Boot winner. And don't forget Abby, the young Frenchman as well. He's fifth choice striker rider. Our uh, contract at the end of the season. It, it was always going to happen. So anyway, here's the game. we got Arsenal here at Carrow Road, as you can see right now in the injury report. Only Brewster is coming back from the serious injury, and he's not fit enough to start the game, though he will be on the bench. Now, we have had a few injuries during this run. Zangrandi's gone down. Bamba's gone down. Provenzano's gone down. But at the moment, everyone else is fine. And the two suspensions today are Jonathan Sanabria and Mason Mount. So this will be our team for the game, then. It's going to be the 4-4-2 Diamond Narrow. Though I have been experimenting with other systems during this run of camera. And Zang Grandy's in goal. It's about for Drew Warburton, Pavlovich, Godfrey and Aaron's with Provenzano, O'Connor and Longstaff, the midfield trio. Bamba, who's had quite a disappointing season so far by his standards, although he has been injured, uh, is supporting Crowley and Gray up top together. And on the bench, Henderson, Basia, Madu, Lorici, Dembele, Abbey and Brewster as well. So first game of two, it's Arsenal. Don't think we'll win this one, but you never know. Come on, you Canaries. Bamba storming forward down the left-hand side, playing it to Drew Warburton. Poor match sharpness today, but hopefully he'll be all right as Arsenal win it back. Such a shame about Sanabria's suspension, man, because he's, he's such a class left-back, and he's came back really good since the broken lower leg of last season, and as Provenzano dives in on Leite, that's a penalty every day of the week. I tell you, there's one thing I've noticed about my team this year, and I'm not sure why it is, but we're giving away a lot more fouls than normal as Romario Barrow makes it 1-0. And we've already had three red cards this season. And we barely ever get red cards in the entire season, in, in the seasons of this save. Yet, yeah, three 
and we're not even halfway through the season so far. That's a huge surprise, and I'm not really sure what's caused that. But anyway, penalty given away by Provenzano, converted by Barrow, 1-0 down already, and yeah, we're just, we're not going to win this. Talked about it in the very last episode, we're just not there yet. I know, you know, we are getting there, as Leite heads that free kick just wide post. We are getting there, but we're just not there yet. I would say give it a season, maybe two, possibly three at the absolute most. That's when I'll start to feel confident in these sort of games. But until until I feel differently, it just seems like every game where we take on a big team, we expect to lose. You know, we have got a great young team. We're getting better year after year. But again, it's it's a very it's a very common thing that I have to keep on saying. We're just not there yet. It won't be long. It won't be long. You know, I know it seems like it's been a lot longer than it normally would be, and it has been as well. As Teddy Gray said, it's straight at Alex Merritt. Considering last year with Cardiff, in six seasons, we got to the Champions League final. No, really, let's be honest here, that was a bit of a fluke. But, um, you know, this is this is the most difficult FM I've ever played. I've mentioned that many times before. We we are now getting there. I, I, I think from here on out, we will definitely be a Europa League team at the absolute bare minimum. But we're, we're getting there. I would say next season, we could be playing Champions League football. I doubt it. But I would say the season afterwards, and definitely the season after that, we will be. What I'm saying we will be, we only will be if we can start winning these sort of games, unfortunately. Do you remember back in like season three, season four, we actually had a really good record against the big teams, but since then, we've reverted back to our old ways of being very submissive and very passive. But still down by a goal here. We've not done too badly out there though, you know, having more of the ball, we've had more shots on target as well. But unfortunately, nothing really noteworthy so far. The gun is still looking like the far better team. Everton smacks one in from range and makes it 2-0. Down two now, game's over. Game definitely over now, no doubt about that. And I'm so frustrated the Spurs have really picked their form up. What a goal that is since the uh, beginning of the season. Man City as well, they're breathing down our next two. As I mentioned, it's so bloody hard to break the top six up consistently. And they, you know, in this save, they are just not going away. Even when teams like Chelsea last season started off really poorly, they always come back. Seems like we haven't played badly out there, based on the statistics. But unfortunately, as Everton makes it 3-0, we haven't got a goal. And we haven't created a single clear-cut chance either. Again, just not there yet. I really, really, really hope if it's not next season, it's the season after that. When we're playing Champions League football. Bloody hell, Zangrande, you've got a hole in your hand. But um, yeah, 3-0 down at home. Again, we just these sort of teams are just a level above us, and we need to accept that. We... <laughs> We're getting there. We are getting there. And I know it's been a long time coming and I know we're not there yet, but we, we are getting there. It's like, a, you know, it's like flying from, I, I don't know, New York City to Bangkok. It's going to take a long time. You've got to be patient. But fuck me. Are we going to lose this game 4-0? Really? At home as well? I mean, I know we've been missing Brewster out there, but come on, guys. Great save by Zan Grandi on a one-on-one. -on -one. I think the Tiki Taka 4-2-2-2 is coming to its end of its life cycle. It's always sad when we've got a barrier formation, be it the 4 2 3 one or the 4 one 2 3 or anything else we experimented with. But yeah, I'm starting to believe now this, this Tiki Taka is basically finished. I do like the 4 4 2 as Teddy Gray scores and gets to the length of the season to make it 3-1. So good to grab a consolation goal, if nothing else, and make sure the goal difference isn't going to be as hammered as it would have been. But, uh, yeah, you know, I do like the 4-4-2. I do. You know, it's got some nice balance, and I think we play pretty well with it. I don't think we've lost with the 4-4-2 yet. So, for the Sheffield Wednesday game, I'll definitely play it. Not going to be too mad about this game here. You know, we were definitely underdogs for it. I, I thought we'd lose, and we did. And, again, we look at the stats here. More of the ball, more shots, more on target as well. And didn't play too badly, uh, according to that. And I'm, I'm never going to be too disappointed at my team when we, when we don't play badly and lose. Like, if we go out there and we just roll over and let our tummies get tickled, then, you know, I am going to get pretty goddamn aggressive and assertive. But in games like that, where statistically, it don't look like we play too badly and there are positives to take home, you know, just say to, say to the boys, you've been unlucky. We were the underdogs. What more can you expect? But I really want to play Champions League football, though. I really want to play it. I really want to play it. This is our eighth season, and I really want to play Champions League football. It should have been this year as well. It should have been this year. You know, I choked it in the league, and then the team choked it in the Europa League. It was it was a it was a you know team choking effort. So 
So let's switch to 4-4-2 for the following game then. And again, for those that didn't see this in the last episode, it's a wing play system. And these are the instructions as well. I quite like it. I quite like it. I like the uh, standard defensive line engagement because sometimes I'm guilty of pushing the boys way too high up and that can obviously backfire when balls go over the top like they often do in FM. And also as well in the pressing as well. It, it seems like in football manager these days, it, it certainly was last year, people prefer a really high press. But I, I personally have had a bit more success in recent seasons ducking the pressing intensity down a little bit more and uh, not, not being willing to go out and meet the opposition as much as you ordinarily would. I, I, I know that pressing is, is the way to go nowadays, it seems, but I, I kind of prefer just sitting back a little bit. So second and final game of today's episode as we do take on Sheffield Wednesday who right now are in form in the championship right now with Will Rose part of their side as well. Of course he won't feature tonight as he's ineligible but uh, in sixth place in the championship and with us winning just three of our last seven games this is a potential banana skin which we need to avoid and based on the teams remaining in the FL Cup last season reached a final. This season, I think we can do the same thing again. So let's try and get through some semis tonight and uh, get through a minimal fuss as well, as this will be the final time we'll see Adam Ida as he'll be leaving on Sunday and won't be eligible to play against Bournemouth. So this will be our team for the game. It's going to be the 4-4-2 wing play with Dean in goal. About for Rotelles, Vasia, Akua Kuhn, Larici. And on the wings, you've got Madu and Jokic. And in the middle, Mason, Mount, and Herman Bamba. I feel like I need a couple of seniors out there today to make sure we do get ourselves the result with minimal fuss. And up top, you've got Rian Bruce, the first game back since injury. And Abby as well. And on the bench, Jan Grandi, Pavlovich, Warburton, Sadi, Dembele, Gray, and Adam Ida for the final time. I'm going to bring him on at some point. I'd love to see him get a goal in his final game for the club. So second and final game, it's Sheffield Wednesday. Let's make it through with minimal fuss tonight. Come on, you Canaries. Again, the Owls in very good form this season. Uh, Will Rose, by the way, for those wondering, has been ever-present in their team. As they're in sixth right now, he's got a couple of goals and a couple of assists in their championship campaign thus far. And I actually watched one of the goals he scored in the match highlight section because it was an amazing free kick from range. I might include that, actually, if I get time, as Mount heads that uh, free kick just wide from Herman Bamba. But, uh, yeah, the Owls doing right, quite well right now. And, again, just three wins in our last seven in all competitions. It's not been a good run, even though we are at home. Even though we have got the far better team, this could be a tough one. Now, charging forward though, and going all the way perhaps. Oh, yes! We talk about settling the nerves. Three minutes in, Mason Mount with a goal. That's why you're not going to Spurs, Mason. You're staying here. He don't want to be here, but I really like Mason Mount. I absolutely love his work ethic. His mental stats are brilliant. And as a box-to-box -box midfielder, I mean, you can't ask for much better. He's good at the defensive job, but when going forward, he's just such a hard player to stop because he can score goals from range like that. He can set them up. He's such a brilliant player, Mount. And uh, he's given us our third goal, so just going to need to show the stats of him there as we do lead by one. Perfect start, let's make it two. It's dominating possession to start the game off here as Amiichi is denied by a good stop by Henderson who turns behind for a corner. This is the danger of playing this way. It's not a possession-heavy type of tactic. And as many of you guys know, I like to dominate possession, have literally as much as it, uh, much of it as I could possibly have. I just, I, I really like having it. It's a bit, of a bit of a Louis van Gaal philosophy, but if we've got the ball, the opposition can't hurt us. And I, I love control and possession, but still, up by a goal... But Sheffield Wednesday looking very dangerous here as Santiago fires over. Never comfortable leading by one. Sheffield Wednesday right now, some good body language out there as well. We've got a far better and fitter side. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to find a second. But there is an injury for Jokic. We've had quite a few injuries this season and another one here. But here come the championship side again. You have looked very good tonight. Talked about it being a potential banana skin and it's looking that way early. Amiichi... Is saved by Henderson. His shot saved, that is. Still 1-0, but right now the championship team looking better. Can't let it become three wins in eight. And oh my word, was that off the line there? I think it might have been by Alex Tellez. As the Owls right now are looking very dangerous indeed. Still leading by one. Hopefully we can see it out to a half time. Mason Mount coming forward, taken down by Stewart. And that could be a big, big luxury. And it is going to be indeed second yellow card for that young man. And, well, not young, Kevin Stewart, but still 1-0 and the Owls now down to 10 and, and now down to 10 men, half their game to go. This should be ours. Really wanted to see Bamba get a goal today or at least an assist considering his tough start to the season. But uh, I'll, I'll say to the boys here again, it's a great opportunity to show the punish they've been right to back you up. But I will individually criticise the attack and the midfield as well. Second half to begin, even though we have a man advantage, 
I'm I'm not going to be comfortable until we found a second goal. Adi to Karamoko Dembele off the bench. His pass cut out. It will drop to Bamba. Gives it back to Dembele. Oh, and he's just about squeezed it in. Oh, he got a feel for the goalkeeper there. Should have kept it out with Dozen. And Dembele playing for a new contract. Out of contract at the end of the season. There is interest from Spurs, but no bids yet. He wants to stay. And I've talked about it before. I, I Oh, what a lovely assist by Bamba there. I probably should give him a new deal. It's just he's on 60 grand a week. And it is very hard to fit him into our tactical system now. Regardless, he's got the quality. It's 2-0 Norwich. And now we should be able to run away with it as Abby heads that corner over. Oh, why is my Mac lagging lately as well? I don't know what is going on. I feel like the old girl is on its last legs. But either way, I've had it for about nine years now. So I guess I've got to expect it as Madu comes inside and it's blocked. Abby's shot is blocked and the hours get it clear. I, I don't know if it's a, a heat thing. But it's absolutely baking right now in the UK, so perhaps that's why. But yeah, it's, it, I've never had this problem before, but now it's lagging like crazy. I only have ScreenFlow, my recording software, open, and the game as well when I'm recording. So I, it's not like there's a, a lack of CPU available, but for some reason it's just absolutely crazy. And um, hopefully it's, it's not too off-putting, and hopefully as well... I'll, uh, I'll be able to get it resolved. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to hope it is the weather that's causing this at the moment. Because, again, it's absolutely baking right now. There's very little ventilation in my room either. But it's just so frustrating. Hopefully we can get to the game and not see many more highlights. Because this is just painful to watch. Just Telez crosses and bionic legs heads over. Yeah, you, know, you know your computer needs an upgrade when it can't even handle the 2D. <laughs> And Ida has just come onto the pitch for his final few minutes in a Norwich City shirt. We'll see if he can find a late goal in stoppage time in his final appearance for the club. Oh, thought it might have happened there, but nope, it's uh, it's finished. And that is going to do it then. So Adam Ida graces the pitch for the final time in a Norwich City shirt. Farewell, Adam. We will miss you loads. But the Canaries do march on to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Last year, beaten finalists. This year, who knows? But we're into the final four. I do apologise for the lag as well, guys. I don't know why it's been like this over the past couple of episodes. But again, I, I, I only have the couple of things open that I need when I'm recording, so I'm not entirely sure why it's happening like this. But to end, today, end today's episode off, what we'll do is we will do the draw for the EFL Cup, which should come tomorrow uh, for the semi-finals. We'll see who we'll face, and we'll end after that. It's actually today, Friday, but here we go. Arsenal, Spurs, us, and Stoke City going into the final four. No disrespect, but of course I would prefer the championship side, and let's see who will be taking on. I predict it'll be Arsenal, though, and it's going to be... Arsenal. <laughs> First leg coming to Carroll Road. We don't get that much luck in our cup draw, so not much of a surprise. We've got the Gunners in the semi-final, and if we are to get back to the final, we'll have to take out the best team in England, going for four straight Premier League titles. Yep, I think our chances have just taken a massive blow. But that was this episode of the Football Manager series, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really if you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return with... I can't see us getting through that game. So I don't think I'll bother with that, to be honest. I think we'll do. Because I will be fielding a week inside as well. Because the Premier League games that are coming in January. Absolutely amazing. We've got a massive force from here. Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United. I think we'll come back with Man City and Liverpool. I think, home and away uh, against the team right now, going for a Champions League place and Liverpool in great form as well. So, yeah, have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode in my Football Manager series very soon.